one. Uh, right, from eye health to mental health now, and it's proven that regular exercise can boost your mood. So Julia Bradbury is on a mission to get us all moving. Come on. I absolutely love walking and I make sure that come rain or shine, I walk somewhere every day. But the big question is, can you walk yourself to happiness? Well, I think you can, but can we get the entire nation walking themselves to happiness? I'm calling on each and every one of you to get Britain walking. Walking back to happiness, Today my walk brings me just outside Taunton in Somerset to the very special Hestercombe House and Gardens. Now the word magnificent is overused quite a lot, let's be honest, but today I think we're on safe ground. My kids often complain that I'm getting on a bit, but the oldest remaining part of Hestercombe House dates back to 1280. Frankly, if I look this good when I'm 800 years old, I'll be happy. And with over 50 acres to explore, I can certainly get my steps in today, but not before finding out a little bit more about these amazing gardens from head gardener Claire Greenslade. Claire, normally I tell people to take what I call nature snacks, to sort of get a break and immerse themselves in a bit of green. But I don't need to tell you because this is your nature snack. It's insane. I'm very lucky, aren't I? And you're less likely to find me inside in the office. I can't bear being inside. Can you give me a potted history of the garden? So this garden in particular was built by Edwin Lutchins, an architect, and Gertrude G. a plants woman. And these were the rock stars of their day when it came to garden design. If you could afford them, this, this was the pair to have. Definitely. The they were very fashionable. But there's gardens that predate that. So we have the Victorian gardens up by the house. And pre that, we've got a Georgian garden dating from the 1750s. Right. So I, I've heard the term lost garden. What, what got lost? Who lost it and why? Well, when the family line died out, the house and the, this garden was under the ownership of the Somerset Fire Brigade. And they kept this garden ticking over because it looked nice next to the house. But the landscape garden was lost and it all became overgrown. It all got forgotten about. And since the 90s, we've been all, as Hestercombe Gardens Trust, working to restore that and get it back to its former beauty. You can go There's an interesting story, isn't there, about how these gardens were recreated, reclaimed in a way? There is, because this garden dates from the 1750s and it had gone to rack and ruin. Philip White, who rediscovered this garden, must have had a fantastic imagination because there was no water, there were no ponds. It was full of trees, full of brambles, full of ivy. And through his research, we found paintings by this guy called Banfield, who was an owner of the estate in the 1750s and built this garden. His painting showed us exactly where this should be and what it should look like. They were the Polaroids of the day. They were, and they're a great reference for us in, as gardeners. After the exhilaration of the Great Cascade, Claire takes me to a section of the garden designed to calm and soothe. Parts of this walk have been specifically designed with contemplation in mind, haven't they? They have. At every point on the walk, um, so you can see up here all these, what we might call follies, the Georgian school seats. And at all of those points, they're specifically designed to have viewpoints. So you're meant to sit down, look at the view and take a moment. While I want to get Britain walking, what I'd really like is to get Britain walking mindfully. Mindfulness expert Kerry Louise Morton Thomas has been doing just that, personally and professionally, for 20 years. Mindfulness means different things to different people, so what does it mean to you? Mindfulness is about bringing our awareness into the present moment. So it's taking our minds out of our to-do lists, mm. thinking about the future, thinking about the past, and really bringing ourselves into the present moment. And when you say that, being in the present moment, that's what we all struggle with, isn't it? To be in the now, to be in the present moment. And that's why mindful walking is such a useful practice, because the movement helps to anchor us to the present moment. We are feeling the sense of the earth beneath our feet. We're slowing our walking down so that we notice that. We are aware of our surroundings, the sound of the birds and the trees or whatever is happening around you. So you're aware of your environment and you're also aware of your body and how you feel. 
we need to connect again with ourselves. And with, with nature. our bodies. And with nature. And with nature. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we all get is, here we are in these stunning gardens and it's very easy to sort of walk through and think that they're something separate but actually we are a part of them absolutely and remember you can practice mindful walking anywhere it doesn't have to be in glorious surroundings but if they are magnificent like the gardens of Hestercombe house so much the better I've always said that walking has been my friend my therapist and my outdoor gym through good times and through tougher times too so I hope this series leads you down the path to healing and health through nature and walking too. Look She's at that. She's so good, isn't she? Isn't she? she? Just such a, like, just good human being. I'd love to go on a walk with Julia, yeah. yeah. wouldn't you? Me and my dad. My dad's, <laughs> my dad's <laughs> obsessed. I'd really love but, to go on a walk with Julia. Uh, and getting out and about can be wonderful for you. Like Julia said, try and be mindful of where you are, what's around you. She talks more about all those sort of things in her book. Walk yourself happy. Find your path to health and healing in nature, which is out now. Thanks, Julia. Yes, thank you very much. Right, come.